welcome back to my space watch natalie spelled n-a-t-a-l-e-e -E. i'm here to do your free daily psychic tarot reading and my loves the downloads are interesting because they're first of all there's a very specific message for someone out there in terms of I don't know if this is literally meeting someone named Lil or Lily, or if that is a metaphor or if it's some sort of clue for you. I'm going to leave it there, but I did have a dream last night that felt like it was for someone of you, or um, perhaps for the collective at a later date, where I was being led down a hall and someone was telling me, you have to, you have to meet Lil, and, we, and there's this room and there's people inside and they're all kind of crowding around this person and it felt like it could have been the colors were very bizarre like they were sort of muted and they all kind of blended together in terms of people were not individually wearing clothes from different time periods or different styles that were drastically different it was almost a sort of vibe maybe scholastic or something i'm not quite sure but anyway so I don't know what that is. That might come up for someone. And then I did get a very distinctly nostalgic romance for a time period in history. For someone, it's the 50s, also the 20s and the 30s. Yeah. And 40s the 20s 30s 40s and 50s there could be something that you're doing that has to do with something of the sort but what I'm getting is like the fashion of the time I'm getting um, like just different dresses and different patterns and different accents and that kind of thing so that could be a detail that you're looking at or having very nostalgic romantic projections on top of some sort of visual I'm not quite sure how this part we'll see if that comes up as well but it's almost like thank you it's like Mad Men okay so if, if you like Mad Men a lot or you know let's okay I'm ready to get started but what I got is sort of like a very sunny day type um, like the warmth of the sun, sunlight when you're sitting outside or you're having like pie and milk. It's just something really wholesome, really, really wholesome. What is this energy? Really, really wholesome. You're meditating on this. You're thinking about this. You're daydreaming about this. You're, it's this, it's like a reverie. This could be a reverie for you. Some sort of, oh... You know, I'm filming this on the new moon in Pisces, so this has to do, this is new moon in Pisces energy, so we're going to take a look at what's coming back, because with Mercury, it's conjunct Mercury retrograde in Pisces, so I feel like this is a second chance. Interesting. All right, let's see where this goes, but yeah, I'm absolutely picking up on you either taking a break, taking a rest, or you already took a break, you already took a rest, a vacation perhaps, and you're about to come back into... <sighs> Contention with someone over a perspective. Now you've thought about this, you've thought about it, you've meditated on it, you sat with it, you prayed about it, you did whatever you do, and now you're coming back into the arena of the world, you're taking this knowledge, this inspiration, creative inspiration, or this memory. For some of you, this is a dynamic playing out with other people in terms of Perhaps someone else is arguing your memory to you so that you are remembering the past the way you experienced it and someone else is challenging that memory. Someone else is, and that's fits, that totally fits in with this new moon Pisces with Mercury retrograding. But 
more on that in the new moon in Pisces video live. So if you um, have the time, if you're available and you want to come sit with us and listen in on the new moon in Pisces video, the astrology of it, we'll be getting into that later today for those of you who are watching this live as it's premiering. So yeah, for some of you though, this is family where you, you're like, you know, you're replaying your own memories and then someone could be trying to gaslight you saying, you know what? That's not how it happened. You're lying. You know, they're calling you a liar or something. That's for some of you. For others of you where this is creative, this could have to do with a time period, a period piece. Or it is just... Not, I'm not even getting that it's so stuck on the period piece of it. I'm getting more of the feeling of nostalgia. So this feels more like Tim Burton's Edward Scissorhands. So you see how that movie takes place in a sort of very fictionalized, um, not campy, but it's just his own, it's, it's, it's just one very specific sort of projection of American life and what normalcy is, what that looks like, and how narrow that looks on screen. And then Edward is from the, you know, it's, um, yeah. That's what I'm getting from this, that it could all, for those of you where it's creative, it's like, Whatever you're remembering, memory, whatever you're remembering or thinking about or imagining, it is, it's that, but it's, a, it's like to the 10th power or it's a little bit more whimsical because of how you are sort of crafting it in this new moon in Pisces energy. It's very creative. Remember in Pulp Fiction where Uma Thurman goes like that in the car? And th there's those little white digital that come to form a box. And that doesn't really happen anywhere else in the film, just at that spot. And you don't really expect it to, to you didn't expect it to, and it doesn't come up again. And it's, it seems out of place, but it's really not. It kind of fits perfectly. That occurred to him because he sees his movie in like a very specific way. It's how it played out in his mind when he was, when Quentin Tarantino was, you know, kind of seeing it. And then those of you who went on vacation and you're coming back into work, you can expect to walk into a conflict at work that is ongoing. This is a conflict that does not surprise you, a perspective that does not surprise you. What's coming back is some energy that's tense and sort of biting, but it's, but like I'm saying, if for all of you, wherever it's activating in your life, it's not surprising you. It's a conflict, it's a perspective that you already are well aware of. So what's the next energy about what's coming back around? After some inactivity, after a lengthy, like maybe it sort of went down, the conflict or this tension, it disappeared, it sort of faded away, and then and now Mercury is retrograding. Ooh, wow. Three cards, the High Priestess, Temperance, and the Ten of Staves. And it's about to reach its breaking point, and then it will come, it's like it needs to burst. It's like stubborn acne that kind of keeps coming back in the same place. You know, it's the same acne. It just keeps coming back. You try to clean it. You try to do everything. You try to like medicate it. You try to stuff it. You try to like heal yours. Try to drink water. You try to do everything. And it just keeps flaring up. And then finally, I don't know, maybe you just get blessed by the skin gods. And then finally, or you get your diet right, whatever you're eating, whatever happens. And it finally goes away forever like for good like for the next long while because it, it's finally at its max point and then the healing comes in and the balance comes in I don't know your hormone balancing your chemical neurochemical I don't know but it comes into balance your skin clears up and you know all is kind of right with the world again 
But for those of you where this is not acne on your face or something like that, and this is a conflict, then this conflict is going to get worse before it gets better. Okay, this with this, oh, you know what? I wish I had it in front of me. We have Venus interacting with Saturn and Pluto. There's all kinds of other stuff happening in the sky over the next moon cycle. So when the full, when the new moon in Pisces culminates into the full moon in Virgo, could be around that time when this gets to be a little bit too much. And I feel like you're the one, you're like, I totally see this coming. None of these people surprise me. None of these perspectives shock me. I've seen this all before. Um, and I feel like you have to let it play itself out. I see you from the Four of Swords being very calm, collected, zen out. Whatever you're doing, you're keeping your side of the street clean. You're managing your own emotions and your own mind responsibly. Other people around you are the ones who are sort of not channeling energies very responsibly. And whatever that conflict is, it is going to get worse. Someone in particular is going to, I like have like a fuck it moment. Fuck it, I'm out, I'm gone. That could be coming up and it could be necessary for that person to stick, stick up for themselves. It might just be that moment for them to say, you know, kind of, well, the Ten of Staves, it's fire energy. So I feel like people could come out and say things that they don't necessarily, you know, something that throws all the staves on the ground, whereas everyone's got one to fight each other with. I feel like this could be something that's like, you know what, this has been on my mind forever. I've been wanting to say, fuck you, you know, whatever it is. It's like, I, this is, it's just too much. You always ask for me for money or you always take my stuff or you, you I, something where it's like they finally have the breaking point, the straw that breaks the camel's back. And I don't think it's you. It could be you, sure, but I feel like this is someone else in the situation. I feel like the this is the strongest energy in the reading. It's the first card out. So I feel like you are you're not going to let anyone hijack your attention, hijack your emotional state. You're not going to let anyone create disorder in you. You're especially whatever this is. If you're if you're coming back from vacation or something, you're coming back from like a wellness retreat. You're coming back from some sort of thing, thing of whatever. So your energy is really good in this. Your energy is very like non-polluted. Like this coming in around this, I don't feel like you are at stake for succumbing to those lower, you know, pettier little energies. Now, because you're still here, because you're around other people fighting, I recommend making everything funny, making everything a joke. <laughs> I'm just going to give you a heads up that does not always work. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe Natalie shouldn't start giving advice. Maybe I should keep it to just channeling. <laughs> but honestly, that's how I would go. Because, you know, when you're the one that people go to saying, oh, so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. And then the other person comes to you and goes, well, so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. And you're in the middle between all of this other stuff going on. You know, it's, I don't think it's going to stress you out, but I don't want you to worry about your lack of response, your lack of urgency, worrying that that is going to stress someone out, that they're like not on your side. You know, don't like that. Don't let yourself devolve into these little circles of hell <laughs> and thinking and like getting into other people's like, you know, if you catch any of this bad energy, just deflect it. You know, if they don't laugh at your joke. They just missed an opportunity to laugh. Okay. Yeah, they're saying that's dumb, but they do want, you know what? Hold on. This could either be the shortest reading we've ever done. I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll, um, We'll get, no, this might be though. Let's, let's get, um, let's get Divine Feather. Make it interesting. 
Yeah, I really, this is another, like, very simple, straightforward energy. The conflict's going to work itself out. We'll come into balance. Oh, we have a grouse. That's the feather. Embrace the power of dance and movement to access your highest guidance. You know, I actually feel like the ten of states with that one. I feel like the movement and the physical activity, there's something there with that. There's something with like using your voice and kind of throwing all those staves down and like stomping off. Like I feel like with the five of staves and the ten of staves, they're the most active self-determined energies in here the other two energies are major arcana and then we have a very calm passive energy with you so i feel like it is these other people who are going to be more in their movement and let's see what does it say embrace the power of dance and movement to access your highest guidance so if you're if i'm channeling one of the people who are really flustered or just to give you some insight into these people that you're around, the better way that they can channel their frustration in the situation is through physical activity. And actually, if you're the calm Zen person in this scenario, if you're a leader of a group project or what have you, or the families are fighting again, whatever it is, you can be the voice of reason and you can be the person who is sort of nudging and pushing people into um, competitive sports just for fun or exercise, physical, vigorous activity, horseback riding. Um, but I say competitive sports specifically because healthy competition could be a healthy way to channel this type of energy. I'm not really getting comp competition specifically, but I'm sure for some of these, for some, at least one person in this, there's likely a little underlying little thing of niggling competition where it's like something weird, I'm sure. But um, yeah, so I feel like that grouse is more towards the people that are actively using their energies to actively fight and, you know, go into conflict and going out of their way to be petty, going out of their way to make things more difficult so, and the other one is the duck, sorry. There's the feather. Find comfort and balance in simple ways. You have support all around you. So this is where you are. You're coming from the little, the ducky duck perspective where you do find balance and comfort and support all around you. You look at you, you're so zenned out. You're totally like laughing at, laughing it all off saying, yeah, I remember when I was getting red in the face over that too. I remember when I had to change my first tire on the side of the road too and I didn't have nothing with me and I was irresponsible and I did this wrong and that wrong and or you know whatever it is it's like you're having that moment into this conflict of whatever this is and the nostalgia I feel like is what also kind of keeps you in this comfortable place. Find comfort and balance in simple ways. You have support all around you. When I got that kind of like all around you part, that's where that feeling is. Like this nostalgia, this sort of fantasy of the past or, you know, that could have something to do with what you're seeing every day. That could have something to do with the support that's around you or be sort of stimulating you know, maybe someone comes into work wearing like a brooch of a huge bee or uh, yeah, like a huge bee with little rhinestones and stuff. Or it's like, maybe it's like, you know, the, you, you go, Hey, where'd you get that? You know? And she goes, Oh, I got it in an antique store. And you go, Oh my God, my grandmother had one just like that. Or my mom had one just like that. And you're seeing it on this girl walking around with this huge brooch and it's sort of kind of brings you back and you know checking in with that part of the family they're in turmoil or in conflict and it's like oh, a thing that it blows up but then it gets better it gets healed you know but I feel like this is very much in divine timing for these other people that are around you so you just keep doing what you're doing um, but ex I would expect the opportunity the second chance, this kind of lucky break coming around for this, whoever I'm channeling, this Mercury retrograde conjuncting the new moon in Pisces, that this spread is for specifically for you out there. 
this is bringing the conflict around again for it to just burst and pop the right way <laughs> so that it gets cleaned out completely with antimicrobial, antiseptic, anti-nasty solution and gets dried out in the beautiful sunlight. Gets nice and crusty so we can just lick it off. So fear not, my love. Okay, one last piece of advice from Moonology and then I will let you guys go. All right. Well, that's pretty simple. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it, it totally wouldn't be worth it. It wouldn't be worth it for you to lose your head over this conflict coming back up. Number one, you already recognize it. Number two, it's going to get evened out. Ah, and perfect. The one, the first card and that thing that came out that was gurgling forward. Look at the bigger picture of full moon and Sagittarius energy. So just look at the bigger picture out of this entire scenario. Let the people in conflict channel those energies however they feel like they need to. They're working out their own karma. So you don't have to go and intermingle and entangle with their karma, with their energies. You can just find comfort and balance in simple ways. You have support all around you for your personal, you know, peace and happiness and whatnot. And if you are around these people in their moments of sort of looking for guidance or you can feel like they're open and receptive to guidance and suggestion steer them towards movement towards dance competitive sports and fun stuff because it will help them all right guys take care i'm sure there are updates that i am forgetting i'm like still coming you know i'm still like in this energy but if i think of anything else i'll update you and have a great day and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. The energy layer underneath that, what's activating what's happening with you, Pisces, is that you don't have to do it alone anymore. I'm getting alienation. I'm getting that you feel alienated, that you feel like you're not really part of the group around you or the town around you. In your overall energy for the second week, that's where things really change. <sighs> breath of fresh air you feel like the energies around you are finally shifting and changing and, and just different because that's an important adjustment in your own energy to release that to let it go okay they're moving away from disappointment and heartbreak you are moving away from having to do everything alone someone's just not into it anymore a connection they're reaching out with a connection to connect with them something that didn't happen this is very out of your control here opportunity is to break the chains and release the ego that has you if you feel victimized if you feel like you're being picked on if you feel like you are being attacked those are all triggers for this ego issue that you're going through in this situation the Wheel of Fortune, Two of Swords, Six of Staves. Whoa, 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 whoa. And that takes us back to week one, where, Leo, you were kind of flourishing together, or it is the love between you two. It proves to be the game changer for both of you. Another Leo card. Lion, the strength. As early as, yeah, week three. With the justice here, there's so much equality, equanimity is when I see money coming in for you. Let me just put it that way. They're giving me spiritual breakthrough. They're giving me like a huge breakthrough here. Like an implosion, like overcoming your own internal battles. And you did that in week... It's like incredible. These are new friends that you're making. So there's something there with you that you are just... You're shining so bright. You're such a bright little star.